Here's a trigonometry question from the January 2021 CSEC math paper. I'm going to give you a minute, pause the video, read it through, and then let's see if we can get the answers to these three questions. Now let's start with the first one. It says on the diagram, we want to insert the value of angle QHS. So first let's identify what, what, what is that angle. QHS. So that's the angle that's right here, QHS. What do we already know? Let's go to the information in the question. It says that from a harbor H, the bearing of two boys, S and Q, are 185 degrees and 311 degrees, respectively. A bearing is the angle measured in degrees clockwise from the north. So that means here we can see the bearing of S already shown. Starting from H, going clockwise, the bearing of S is 185 degrees. That means the bearing of Q, starting from H, going clockwise, is going to be 311 degrees. So I'm going to write that right here. So that's what we already know. Can that help us to figure out the size of angle QHS? Well, yeah, it can because QHS is going to be that difference between the bearing of S and the bearing of Q. So that means angle QHS, we don't need to go any further because QHS is going to be equal to 311 degrees minus 185 degrees. And if I put that in my calculator well you don't really have to but i'm just going to do it here i know you guys love your calculator and that's 126 degrees so angle qhs is 126 degrees next we want to find side qs side qs so let's first identify that is the side right here this is qs now what do we already know I'm going to kind of clear up what I have here just to make sure we're seeing all the information that we need. So we know that this angle is, let me write it in 126 degrees. Uh, do we know anything else? Well, yeah, from, from the question here, we know that Q is 5.4 kilometers from H. So let me put that on the diagram. So Q is 5.4 kilometers from H and it says S is 3.5 kilometers from H. So this would be 3.5 kilometers. Whenever we're thinking bearings, we're either going to use angle properties or we're going to use one of the trig rules. Which one would work here? I can't really use any angle properties because I need a side. So I'm going to have to use one of the rules. Is it going to be the cosine rule or the sine rule? Let me look at what I know. This side is 5.4, this side is 3.5, and the angle in front of the unknown side is 126 degrees. So I know, the ang I know two sides and the angle between them, and that means to find the opposite side to that angle, I could use the cosine rule. So remember, I don't want you to, to, to memorize the rule. It's on the paper already. You don't need to. But what you need to know is the relationships. And once you kind of get like this little arrow forming in front of one of the sides, then that kind of gives you an idea that you're going to use the cosine rule, especially because you don't know the side that's in front of it. So let me start labeling the sides, right? So let me come a little bit over here. If this side, if this angle here is at H, then this side will become an H write that better this side over here would be q because it's opposite to q or in front of q and this side up here would be s because it is in front of the angle s so by the cosine rule by the cosine rule then the square of this side the square of h is going to be equal to the sum of the squares of the other two sides, q squared plus s squared minus two 
times those sides times the angle in front of them. So that's cos h. So that means h squared is going to be q squared. So that's 3.5 squared. And s squared, 5.4 squared. And remember, it doesn't matter what you call q or s. What matters is identifying the side. And then that's going to be 2 times 3.5 times 5.4 times the cosine of, do I have enough space? Let me come over 126. You know me, I like to throw everything in the calculator. So right away, I'm just going to put all of these numbers in the calculator. So that's 3.5 squared, you know, protects me from errors, plus 5.4 squared minus 2 times 3.5 times 5.4, no, cos 126, and we get 63.628 something something. I think I'm going to round it to the nearest decimal place because if you look at it, the, the, the values that we're given are rounded to one decimal place. So that means h squared is going to be 63.6. Right? And that means that h is going to be equal to the square root of 63.6. And again, if we put that into our calculator, the square root of our, uh, of our answer, we would get 7.97 something, something, something. When we round that off to the nearest decimal place, that's going to be 8.0. So... That side is going to be 8.0. Therefore, the length of QS is 8 kilometers. Now, let's go back to our question. And now we've figured out I, we've figured out I, I. So we need to calculate the bearing of S from Q. So uh, let me go down a little bit and I'm going to carry the diagram with me and then we're going to fill it out. So we want the bearing of S from Q. I'm going to put that right here. And we already know that this side is 8 kilometers. What is the bearing of S from Q? It would be best for me to draw that. It's probably best for me to draw that. So that means since I'm going from Q, I'm going to start at Q and then find the direction clockwise from the north. So let me set up my north line at Q. Okay, this is my north line. And let me put in my, my, my angle. So it's going to be this angle from here all the way to here. So now if you notice here, it's, it's, it's basically made up of two angles. It's made up of an angle right here, and it's made up of an angle right here. So first, how can we get that angle that's kind of above Q, this, this big one right here? How are we going to figure it out? Well, let's, let's see if we can think about it, right? Again, we're dealing with bearings, so we're going to be thinking of angle properties. Can we use any angle properties here to help us? This looks a little familiar. This actually looks... Or it actually forms, you know, co-interior angles. Because anytime we have any angles or any formation that looks something like this, then these are what we call co-interior angles. And when we have co-interior angles, they sum to 180 degrees. So that means if I can figure out this angle down here, let me mark it clearly if i can figure out this angle where the h is pointing that means i can use it to figure out this angle right at q i'm going to call this angle x let's call this angle x degrees so the bearing of s from q we need to find the angle that's pointing to h okay let's call that angle y we already know all of the angles that are right here. We know that this whole thing is 311 degrees. You remember that? So that means angle Y 
is going to be equal to 360 minus 311 degrees and that is going to be equal to 49 degrees okay so since that is 49 then the angle we want x the angle beside q or above q is going to be equal to 180 minus 49 degrees and 180 minus 49 that's 131 degrees so we know this angle right here we know that angle x it's it's 131 degrees now we need to find this second angle right here okay and that's the angle inside the triangle now again we're thinking bearings let's think about it is there anything here any angle property that can help me i'm not seeing it i'm not really seeing it we don't have any parallel lines or anything like that here so it, it's 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 kind of hard so it seems that we're gonna have to try one of the rules what do we already know well let's kind of try and sum that up we have eight kilometers and we have the angle that's in front of it 126 degrees we want to know the angle at q do we know the side that's in front of it yes the side that's opposite or in front of it is 3.5 kilometers so we have a pair of angles and sides and we also have a known side we want to find an unknown angle which rule would work here the cosine rule or the sine rule yeah the sine rule the sine rule would be the best rule to use here because what the sine rule tells us is that the ratio of the opposite side to the sine of an angle is the same throughout the triangle so once we have an opposite side and its sine to find that ratio we can use it to figure out anything else so by the sine rule or let me let me come a little bit over to the to the right okay yeah by the sine rule the ratio of that side so that that's what sine q the angle that we want over its opposite side q is going to be equal to the sine of the angle we already know 126 or that would be h sine h over the opposite side to it which is h so sine q that we don't know to 3.5 kilometers is equal to the sine of 126 to 8. so now let's see if we can figure that out if i multiply both sides by 3.5 that means sine q is going to be equal to 3.5 sine 126 to 8 and now we can i can throw this into the calculator again because you know me love to throw stuff into the calculator so that's going to be let me set up my fraction 3.5 sine 126 i know this really helps you to get an accurate value when you're finished so that's going to be 0 0.354 0 0.354 so sine q is equal to 0 0.354 so what is q that means q is going to be equal to the sine inverse of 0 0.354 because if we don't know the angle we can do the sine inverse to figure it out so now let me put that in the calculator and now let me look for sine inverse and that's 0 0.354 we get 20.732 but all of the angles so far have been to the nearest whole number so even though it's 20.73 degrees i'm going to just round it to 21 degrees because all of the angles so far have been to the nearest whole number or to the nearest degree rather okay so q is 21 degrees so now let me scroll up back a little bit so this angle right here that we needed to know this angle is 21 degrees so that must mean 
that must mean since the angular Q inside the triangle, so I'm just going to call it Q because we know we're talking about in a triangle is 21 degrees, the bearing of S from Q is equal to 131 plus 21 degrees and that would be equal to 152 degrees.